Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremiah Roberts, one of the co-hosts here at Cultus. Want to first and foremost thank all of you who stepped up to the plate and support us and donated at the end of last year to help out our podcast. As we mentioned at the end of the year, uh, we currently still stand uh, around less than 1% of our audience who are giving. We really want to try and just push that up to around like 3 to 5%, uh, really small amount that we just need of our audience so we can stay crowdfunded to keep going on a regular basis. So if you want to go to the cultishshow.com, you can go to the donate tab. Uh, you can become a monthly partner with us, or if you want to do a one-time donation, you can as well too. Thank you all so much uh, for supporting us, for listening to us, for sharing our content. Uh, again, the cultishshow.com, go to the donate tab. All that being said, enjoy this podcast. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Cultish. This is the Cultish uh, Live here at ReformCon. Uh, we want to have an opportunity to kind of interact with people who uh, enjoy the podcast, talk to a couple of our fans. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm super excited. So let's just jump right into it. Andrew, are you a little tired, man? I'm a little tired, but I'm doing great, yeah. dude. Snacks for days here at ReformCon. Yeah, usually like day three is like the gauntlet. Like, can I get through day three? They're just an aesthetic to the third day, but we're here. We're pumped. We've got our... Uh, Omega snacks. We've got some energy uh, rehydration Juice. stuff. Whatever you call, it. we got the coffee. Coffee's always going. Awesome, man. Uh, and some leftover coffee. There. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if we need more energy. We'll just go for that. <laughs> yeah. So you are uh, you you. Uh, what made you want? So we're a hero reform con. Uh, you've listened to cultures before. First of all, why why'd you come out to reform con? Sure. Well, first of all, let's say uh, uh, I didn't know this was going to be live. I thought we were going to be edited later. So now I got to think about what I'm going to say before I say it. So yeah. This is great. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. No. Uh, <laughs> It was probably a few years ago. Uh, I just threw in Reformed Theology into a YouTube uh, search as I was just trying to uh, get it more educated. And of course, uh -huh. something came up from, from Jeff, of which then I started listening to, to, to Jeff and then saw Apology of Studios. And then just the amount of content that comes out of Apology of Studios, I mean, it really equipping the church. And so I've just become a fan, like probably most people in here. And okay. uh, when Reformed Comic came up, um, I believe... Maybe it was a couple years ago, like the first one or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, And so wasn't able to attend, wasn't able to attend. And then this one came up and I told my wife, he's like, hey, I've got to be in the room. And so here I am. And it's been a very uh, just phenomenal event thus far. The, the teaching, the speaking, everything is just uh, just next level as Apologia Studios and as uh, uh, this group wants to do. So uh, I'm just very blessed to, to be yeah. here, be in the room for sure. Yeah, man, it's awesome. It's really cool just because you think like all the years ago, all the years ago when Apologia Church was just, we were a, ch a church that was 99% people coming out with drug and alcohol addiction. Like yeah. if someone walked through our door, it was someone who was just fresh 30 days out of rehab. Like our nickname was like the drug church. And we are this <laughs> ghetto church with a bunch of extra decks and we never had any money for anything. And to see like us being here right now, it's like, wow, it's really cool to see how God is working for sure. Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed the conference as well too, getting to talk, interact with everyone. As far as like cultish goes, like what episodes have you enjoyed? Uh, what has stuck out to you? And like, why do you think, like what, what sticks out to you when, you when you think of like the podcast and what, what conversations have been relevant to you? Well, I, I think the cultish, uh, I've listened to a handful of podcasts of, of what y'all have done. One, there was one where y'all talked with an ex-Mormon who kind of walked through him as leaving Mormonism and was able to kind of pick that apart. So it was almost like this uh, uh, insider's baseball of, yeah. of, of walking through that That might process. have been Dan, Dan Tate. I think that was yeah a, when he was talking a, about when he was a more missionary. And so again, just the equipping side of it of being able to have these conversations and, and kind of pull back the uh, the, the curtain of uh, of other religions, other cults, and you really look at it that way. Yeah. And so to, to have a better understanding of not just what they believe, but what we believe, and how we should uh, how we should act, how we should have a conversation yeah. with them out out yeah. in, uh, out in real life, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's less of a. I don't know, maybe less of a scary issue because now, yeah. again, we're equipped, right? We're having a better understanding of this. So we're able to go out and have better conversations. And because of that, right. I've been proactive in engaging Mormons. I've been proactive in just, hey, having, let's, let's have a conversation. Let's talk about what you believe, what scripture believes, what's the difference, and just pointing them to truth. And it's because I've been equipped by what y'all have done. So mm -hmm. it, it's been a good experience. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, yeah, well, I appreciate you coming out here. And it's been a, it's just a blessing for us to make the content uh, yeah. all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So, hey, Paul, so what do you think uh, when you hear the word cult? What do you think of? I think of skewed Christianity, right? I don't think there's anything new under the sun. I don't. So I think uh, with everything they, they take, uh, you know, you, you look at the biblical concept of what uh, God has provided us and, and you skew it in some way, shape or form and just get it off kilter just a little bit. Right. 
and so I think all cults are just a skewed part of what what uh, God has deemed right fit, right? I don't think Satan is out there uh, creating anything new. I think he's lying about what God has established. And so when I think about a cult, I think of someone who is just missing the mark and skewing some kind of, yeah. some point somewhere that is leading people astray. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate, yeah. I appreciate you coming out here. And uh, unless you have any other questions or we, we'll jump on to the next person. No, I just want to say thank you. I mean, y'all yeah. are doing incredible work. I love, you know, uh, what you're doing at Cultish, Apologies, Studios, the whole gambit of uh, really equipping the church and, and, and helping us to uh, to go out in real life and, and just have mm-hmm. engaged conversations and spread the gospel. So I appreciate y'all. Awesome. Great. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. Very cool. Glory to God. Thank you, Paul. Very right. cool. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by HireBond.com. It's a brand new year. And if you're single, hopefully there'll be some opportunities to find that special person in your life. So HireBond.com is a Christian dating website. It takes out all of the awkward nuances of online Christian dating. And right now they are offering a special. If you sign up before February, you can get their entire premium membership for absolutely free. So go to HireBond.com dot com forward slash cultish and make sure you sign up for that trial right before february that way you can get the entire year for free and hopefully you'll might even find that special person in your life maybe even a future spouse or a hubby happy hunting everyone higherbond.com forward slash cultish back to the episode so anyways uh how are you i'm good i'm really happy to be here i was so excited to be able to come my husband has both all of our kids yeah, yeah, he's that's a real awesome. MVP. That's awesome. So yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, why'd you come to like what? Like, why'd you make the decision to come to ReformCon? I am, as of maybe like five years ago, a Christian now. I, I've been saved, and I'm so thankful for that. So just diving into theology with my husband, we're both kind of getting into Reformed yeah. theology now, and. Um, yeah, this was my opportunity. He said, you know, he grew up kind of attending different Christian conferences and I didn't. So this mm-hmm. was my chance. Yeah. And like, what have you enjoyed about the cultish podcast? Do you have any episodes that stick out to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely, I've really, probably the last couple of years I've been tuning in, but especially in the last year, yeah. I think as I've been, my family background is Catholic. So mm-hmm. I've come from a lot of semi-occult practices, you know, yeah. a lot of things surrounding death and idols and things like that. So for me, I wish I had known a lot of the things I'm learning from Cultish to look out for, to share with my kids. So that's kind of what I'm taking away from Cultish is learning not only what's out there, mm-hmm. maybe ways that different cults are perverting the word yeah. and how I can protect my kids against that and teach them. Yeah. Um, what do you think when it comes to, because we talked about this the other day, this would be interesting. We, we've actually never talked this about uh, Cultish, but Catholicism. Mm-hmm. Um, some people, would you call it a cult? Or when you look at church history, because we look at, you know, we're, we are reformed. I mean, we are pretty open about that. Mm-hmm. Martin Luther, he went and nailed the 95 Thesis with the intent to reform the church. Mm-hmm. So normally what you look at is that when, when typical um, cults have developed here in the United States, uh, that, that's what we have a huge focus on, that they usually make a distortion. They usually counterfeit the authentic. Um, yeah. In this case, this was... You know, with with because the, they were attempting to reform, like they was like they were trying to refurbish some. I don't know if I could use the right illustration. <laughs> like it's a really messy piece of furniture, and you're trying to like refurbish it, but it's just not redeemable. <laughs> if that's yeah. what you can say, like, how, what do you think about that? In in my in my thoughts, this is like this may be controversial, but this is coming from being Catholic for 20 years, and that was my life growing yeah. up. Stepping away from it now and actually reading the Bible for the first time and and learning truth, I'm of the mindset that they have perverted Jesus and what his abilities are to save us. Mm. Because, you know, you see that you need saints. You need Mary, the co-redemptrix. You need intercession, not from Jesus, but from Mm -hmm. others. And you're praying to dead people, which the Bible is a no-no. Right. So in, in my mind, that has definitely perverted the gospel and, mm-hmm. and, and if it is salvific or not. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I mean, when you get into the more occult dark practices, it gets kind of culty. It feels yeah. in that way. And I think also kind of you give any pushback, any biblical evidence to mm-hmm. some of these claims to a devout Catholic. Yeah. It's not like a discussion that can be had necessarily. It's a very knee jerk, extreme response. Yeah. Like if you say anything, kind of bring up things about Mary, bring up things even about Martin Luther. I think they kind of hate Martin Luther, yeah. and but they think like we worship him. Mm-hmm. And so you bring up, well, he, he didn't even want to leave the Catholic faith. He just wanted to bring it back to what he, you know, biblical yeah. truth 
but they saw him as such an extremist. So mm -hmm. you get immediately, why do you hate Mary? Yeah. And I thought, I never said I hated Mary. I, mm -hmm. I think Mary was a special person, but she wasn't special yeah. because of her own right. She was special because God picked her. He didn't pick her yeah. because she was special. They, they believe that she was sinless her yeah. whole life. And if you talk to a devout Catholic, they'll tell you that that meant that her mother was also sinless, Mary's mm -hmm. mother. And it just goes further yeah. and further back. It really, it gets, you know, kind of hairy. That's, so yeah. That's crazy, yeah. It's, yeah. It can be a lot to process. And even just like trying to have a casual conversation and bring in a little bit of biblical truth just to add some questions to it. It can become hours, and, and it just gets down this rabbit hole that you thought mm -hmm. this was never the intention, but there's so many. It's so complicated. Is yeah. that like your immediate family's like dynamic now that you've come to Protestant Christianity? For sure. I, I have a friend that he says that he's Catholic, but it's, it's not there. And I called my aunt one time. She's very devout, and she does a lot of pro-life work. So I'm not disparaging Catholics in any way. I think that, you know, there's a lot of good in you know, good, great Catholics, there are a lot of Catholics that are saved, I'm sure. But I think, you know, just having this conversation with my aunt and saying, how do you approach people that are even perverting Catholicism and perverting, you know, just biblical basic mm -hmm. truth? Yeah. And it became a two and a half hours debate. And really, I asked her a very simple question. I said, do you know why Mary said she needed a savior? I mean, yeah. oh, ultimately, wow. she, she, she knew that Jesus was her savior and she th was thankful for him. And she couldn't answer the question. She yeah. refused to answer the question. It affronted her. So it's, mm -hmm. it, can, it can get difficult, you know? Yeah. yeah. What do you, so thinking back to growing up as a Roman Catholic, what did you think about Jesus when you heard about him when you were young? I hate to say it. I mean, we didn't really talk about him that much. It's, it's kind of weird. It's more like, a, obviously, Mary and the saints are emphasized a lot. And... If anything, you almost think of Jesus just like baby Jesus. And a lot of times, like I'm Mexican, so in, in Spanish, you know, you hear a lot of Diosito lindo, my like a little precious God almost. Yeah. Diosito is to minimize and then lindo is like cute uh -huh. kind of thing. A lot of it is very, it, it really takes kind of away from his majesty. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. So the occult, when you look at the occult, it's always syncretistic. You mentioned some of your, like you kind of dabbled it when you were younger. Um, so there's a distinction between like how the occult is practiced in India versus New Orleans, the superstitions that are mm -hmm. there versus the folklore in the backwoods of West Virginia. It's always different. And the same thing too is with Mexico. Uh, like I've always seen people message about us where there's always, I forget the exact name of the group, but it kind of blends in with like Catholicism. Yeah, yeah, in a way definitely. Where it, it ends up being like a hybrid that's actually separate from Catholicism. But it's well, like it's, it's like it's a bit of both. it's interesting if you what look you know at like that? Dia de los Muertos. Yeah, there are definitely places like my family doesn't practice that, but there are definitely places where they do celebrate it. And I mean, the Catholic Church, their local parish, will host it. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. they host like festi yeah. festivities for that. So. While they pretend that, like, the Catholic Church just has overall rules for everyone, mm -hmm. it does vary by region what yeah. they will allow and even, you know, condone kind of thing. Yeah. What do you know about the Day of the Dead? I mean, that's a big thing in, in Mexican culture. Yeah. I mean, it seems, because people were asking us, because we did the episode talking about Halloween and it, it, its historical origins. And mm -hmm. I didn't, when I did our research, not too much showed up around the Day of the Dead. No, what do you know about that? I think uh, it's, it's, you know, a lot of ancestry worship, a lot of praying. I think the, you know, I mean, even in Catholic beliefs, you can pray for the repose of a soul for purgatory. So yeah. death is very heavily involved. We think we can help the dead even when they're gone already. So mm -hmm. to pray to ancestors, to ask for wisdom, to ask for blessings is kind of natural. They, they yeah. easily go together. Hmm. And then do you think, because um, you mentioned too who people might be, in the Catholic Church who are saved, who are Christians. I definitely would agree with that. Do you think it might be a situation where it's like they're saved in spite of the Catholic Church? Just because, I mean, if you just look on very, very face value, if you look at the Council of Trent, I mean, the, the Council are just a kind of bearing mark, but that in the Council of Trent, it stated that anyone who didn't believe in salvation by grace through faith alone, that's anathema. Uh, they've never, the Catholic Church has never retracted that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, again, a lot of people are just going in. Yeah. Like, what, what do you think about that? Like, and can you I think there's, there's that? overall, there's so much tradition in the Catholic Church. I think you don't, most people don't dive deeper. They don't get into the 
kind of crazier things that you might hear about. Yeah. So even I have kind of an estranged grandma and I yeah. saw her for the first time a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about this because she didn't realize I had left the Catholic Church. So we were talking about it and she told me, well, once a Catholic, always a Catholic. And I said, technically, I'm anathema. But she mm. had no idea what the Council of Trent was. Right. So most people exactly. don't learn about those kind of things. You know, mm. it's it's my my personal background. I always had questions. And even in high school, my mom had me do a year long course for confirmation. Just yeah. me and the priest. Right. Super awkward. And so I did this year long course and it got to the day of confirmation. She had flown my grandparents in and like we lived overseas. So it was a big deal mm -hmm. for my grandparents to come and, you know, be there. They were going to be my grand, my godparents. Yeah. And I was crying in my room and I told her, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Like I had told her for the longest time, but I, I as her child, you know, I went through the class and I, I obeyed and everything. But I told her, I don't want to do this because I know this doesn't feel right in my heart. Yeah. And I think that's kind of. My my background was I always had questions. I didn't understand certain things didn't make sense to me. And I had I had one time a family member that we were at a wedding and uh, everybody's going for um, a confession. And my 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 one of my siblings asked, you know, oh, so are you going to go do confession? My cousin said, why? I can just talk to God. Mm -hmm. And I thought that resonates with me. Yeah. That makes so much sense yeah. to me. But they're trying to, you know, force everyone to believe that that's not a connection that you can have directly. I'm sorry, I probably got off on a tangent. No, no, this is good. No, this, this is, is good. great. This is really good. Yeah. Uh, no, we're, we're just chatting. This is what podcasting is. <laughs> yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really cool to, to be able to dive into this stuff because yeah. only my husband and I really talk about it, right? My whole side of the family is Mexican right. and, and they're all Catholic mm -hmm. and I love them. I love them so much. And oh, we're talking about salvation. I do. I think that, that, yeah, once you get into it deeper, maybe there are places where it's like, that is true idol worship and yeah. you won't give it up and that's really tough. But I think that there are definitely Catholics that just love God and they're listening to instruction yeah. and at mass, to be honest, you don't get that much Bible. Yeah. So they're not hearing something that would oppose their view yeah. and the traditions that are being presented to them. Yeah. And, and even we talked about this yesterday and Andrew, I'll let you think, give you your thoughts too. Um, I mean, both like if you compare like Matt Walsh versus Michael Knowles, I mean, both are seem to be really nice guys, yeah. uh, really intelligent. I've really thought through a lot of different things. Both are Catholic, but like you'd there be a distinction, like at least from my perspective, of Matt Walsh who grew up in the Catholic Church yeah. versus Michael Knowles who was an atheist but then came to believe in God. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you see them talk about their faith, they're just like a distinct. You just see like a, a distinction between the two. Like yeah. what? What, how, what do you think about that? I, I definitely see that a lot of times people that maybe come into Catholicism either from a different religion or no religion whatsoever, they they dive in, mm -hmm. they go deep. Yeah. And they can they grab onto the saints. There's a saint of hairdressers. They're saint for everything. Yeah, saint they, for hairdressers. They they some of my family members like eat locusts to celebrate. You know, the Baptist Baptist or and like they yeah. they get really into it. Which is you know I'm glad that they are interested in history, but mm -hmm. it can get a little much. Yeah. But I think yeah, people that that come from nothing or something else, they they want to be a part of it. Yeah. And so they go into every corner of it and they soak it in. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are people that are lifelong Catholics. Like this just started a lot of the really intense stuff with my family yeah. when I left Catholicism. Mm -hmm. And I think it kind of gave them a renewed vigor right. for everything. You know, they want to show me that this is like, it's an enriching kind of a thing. Yeah. But I think that people that are lifelong Catholics, a lot of times it's just kind of like a surface level. We go to mass, you know, but if we miss it, like maybe, okay, you know, it's, they don't, I've noticed kind of, I've been, I've been Catholic in many countries. Yeah. You don't necessarily form a community the way that you do in protestant christianity mm -hmm. like we know our our you know fellow christians the, like the people that attend church with us we have them over for dinner we we go to fellowship together we have bible studies things like that i don't think i can say that and i've never heard my family members say oh we had someone from church over today mm -hmm. and they've been there for almost 10 years yeah you know i move like every two years mm -hmm. but we still get involved we get in nursery we get in security you know we want to be a part of the community so yeah. It's just, it's very different. They get together to celebrate traditions, but it's not, they don't really enmesh right. their lives together. No, wow. And, you, when and you that's speaking to yeah. my experience. I don't want to say that for you so, know, everyone. So your family's getting more involved in these deep traditions, like the veneration of the saints and praying to them and stuff. Do they ever talk to you about these spiritual experiences that they have? Like, cause I know, for example, Our Lady of Guadalupe is essentially a, a vision how Mary came to people. What, what? The apparitions, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that happens in many... I went to um, a shrine in Nock where she appeared supposedly and they have, you know, witness testimony and things like that. I, my 
family just last week, I think, went on a pilgrimage. Yeah. And they go, and it was in Oklahoma. To me, a pilgrimage sounds, like, very exotic. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like going like to Europe or something. Yeah, you're going somewhere, like, really <laughs> or, or even, like, Mecca. You're going to be this giant, you know. And so I thought, uh, I don't really. I mean, I've been to Israel, and we did the walk where Jesus walked with the cross and everything. Wow. And But so in my mind, I think of that as, like, a holy experience. I went to Oklahoma. Yeah. I don't know. But mm-hmm. they, they go and they pray for intentions, uh, like, for the world. I, that's something mm-hmm. that is part of it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, definitely, definitely apparitions of mary it's yeah it's almost offensive i know that there's one apparition where they my mom has like a picture of her or something and she has a certain number of stars in her coat and around her and every little piece has a meaning and every little piece they said oh there's like a mathematical equation if you count this up like it divides like it's 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 so scientific almost that it's like you cannot yeah. disprove it but in my understanding it's like this these are just people saying this you know this it's it's it yeah there's a lot of apparitions mm. there's a lot of supernatural um, folklore about Mary. And Has your family ever said they've experienced stuff like that? A lot of kind of what I hear is very emotional. Not not to have seen Mary, but a lot of very emotional, like when they went on the pilgrimage, I almost felt like I was in another planet because it feels so different. Or like, it just felt like the father's presence was so heavy. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a very emotion-driven experience. Wow. Yeah. And, and I mean, a lot of it's really interesting. Mm-hmm. We have like a hymns playlist that I passed on to my mom. And I was like, this really enriches my day. If I'm mm-hmm. having a hard day listening to a good playlist. Yeah. But she's, mm, I don't really know. I'm not really into those yeah. kind of things. She prefers the Gregorian chants. Oh. Interesting. And which, I mean, whatever, yeah. that's your thing. But, but it's, there's like not yeah. like theology to that. You know, it's just chanting. It's, mm-hmm. it's, and that's a lot of Catholic, you know, if you do the rosary, repetitive, yeah. repetitive, repetitive. Yeah. You're getting Mantras into that mindset. And, yeah. Yeah. and you're not thinking about it. Yeah. You're just giving up your pure intention of your yeah. heart in repetition. Mm. I was never comfortable with that. And it's yeah. kind of funny, though, because I grew up more comfortable around it, I guess, because I was there. My husband, we lived for my mom for like a period of six months when he was getting out of the military. And he came in one time on my mom with a couple of people having a rosary service. He thought they were doing some kind of like enchantment or yeah, something. Really? He came back okay. to the room and he was like, what is happening outside? They're just like in the corner and they're just saying the same thing over and over again. And like, what is happening? And I told him, is that is it the rosary he said yeah and it almost was yeah. like a train crash like he just couldn't not watch it it was so <laughs> yeah. funny yeah uh, it's just one other question as we i uh, just kind of wrap up your little slot here things are coming yeah. on this is, i'm yeah. sure i'm glad you got to enjoy this Rick. this is oh, great you got to do that but um question uh just one last thing so when you came to christ when you got saved what were you actually in the catholic church or was it like after you left like what well, like do you have an idea of when that was? I I went in high school. I went on a trip where I I, de- I like I I encountered Jesus in right. a, in a true. Yeah. I became aware that He loved me yeah. despite all of my dirty dirty past, all the things that I do all the time, and I was overwhelmed. You know, I mean that mm-hmm. I feel like was my first real encounter with true Christ. Yeah. Um. Later, it, it kind of we talked a little bit about this yesterday. Yeah. I was kind of like a cultural Catholic. I didn't believe a lot of the things, but this was my family, you know, Mm -hmm. this was my life. And so my husband and I had a period of a few years where he was really like trying, come on, like, let's read this book, like read the Bible with you, do this stuff. And it just, he pushed so hard that I almost fought back. I resisted, which is weird to think you would resist the Bible, but when it's such a foreign book to you and it's almost scary. Mm -hmm. So in my, in my disobedience to God and to my husband, I I fought against him. And Mm -hmm. so there was a few years where we kind of, he was kind of nervous, like, he could tell that I was there, mm-hmm. you know, that, I, that yeah. I, I had everything in the making to be like a solid Christian and, and love the Bible and love God. But he realized his approach was not working. Yeah. So he had to really ease off and just let the Holy Spirit work in my heart. And so mm-hmm. like, that's why I say about five years. We've been married seven years. Yeah. But there were a few years of resistance there mm. where I resisted not only him, but yeah. God. Yeah. All right. Well, wow. it's going to be interesting. We're going to, we're going to probably play. It'll be interesting to see just the feedback. We're like tapping our, we're like, we're yeah, like, we're like yeah. dipping our toe into the water in the conversation about Catholicism. We so might have to have you back on. Yeah. To be I, I totally understand. And that's yeah. why when, when I mentioned to you yesterday, like if you do an episode on Catholicism, like call me because this is, yeah. you know, this has been my whole existence yeah. almost. And yeah. but I totally understand why you haven't because I think there is that in and that when I met my husband, this was kind of the yeah. understanding. Oh, we're both Christians. Like we both love the same God. So this is cool. This is going to be yeah. easy. Yeah. It's not easy. And there are a lot of differences, but you have to get past that surface level. Okay. Yeah. Very, very Thank cool. You. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for uh, coming here. I hope you enjoy the rest no of the conference. Worries. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely.
Hey, what's up, everyone? We love that you are enjoying our content on a weekly basis, but this program cannot continue and wouldn't be possible without your support. So if you want to go to thecultistshow.com, there is a donate tab. You can either support us one time or you can become a monthly partner with us that will allow us to continue this program, allow us to continue to be salt and light to the kingdom of the cults. So please go to thecultistshow.com forward slash donate and you can support us one time or monthly. Also, make sure you check out our merchandise store. Go to shopcultish.com. You can see all of our great designs. A lot of you have gotten merchandise from us already. So again, you either go to shopcultish.com and check out all the awesome merch. Back to the show. Yeah, we're going to have her back on for Roman Catholicism, bro, yeah. if we do that. Yeah, I was like, that's, that was good. That's, that's, that was a, good. that's good. It's, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah. Because there's a couple people, too, that are on... Uh, I follow on Instagram who are like ex New Agers, but they've gone into Catholicism. Right. And it's like, like there's, they're saying that it's good, but then it's like, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. I could see how being New Age and going into Catholicism is a very easy yeah, switch. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, if I do these certain things, I yeah. get into like a higher state of communion with God. Right. X, Y, and Z. Yep. All right. Let's put the headphones on. Let's chat. Right. What's up, man? Yeah, just uh, make sure your mouth is like close to it, and we're good to okay. go. Okay, testing one, two. There we All go. Right. <laughs> so, Anthony, right? Yes, sir. Awesome, man. How are How are you doing? It's better than I deserve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. With Dave Ramsey. <laughs> Dave Ramsey, but there's also a deeper set to that too. Mm-hmm. Um, so you came out from Hawaii. Yes. Uh, what Hawaiian island are you on? Yeah. So we we live on the Big Island. We okay. live on the northern tip of the Big Island in a little country town. It's like the end of the world. It's called Kohala. Hmm. Hawaii's best kept secret, so don't yeah. tell anybody about it. <laughs> yeah. So you're a reformed Christian on on the biggest island. You're a bit of an, an anomaly, a bit of a unicorn. Definitely. Um, you know, most pastors on the Big Island don't even know what reformed means. Right. And uh, we celebrate Reformation Day mm-hmm. religiously. Yeah. And. I would say 99.9% of Christians on the big island don't even know what that is. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think some people are, are Calvinists without knowing it. Yeah. There just ha- isn't like good discipleship there. Mm-hmm. And yeah. people typically aren't very theological. However, the Puritans were the ones that brought the gospel to Hawaii. So really, it's interesting to see how things have, have changed and how we've lost touch of, yeah. of what God has done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just, uh, what's like the nature of Hawaii? Because like a big part with cultures is we, you know, we deal with a lot of, uh, aspects of the new age, uh, the occult. I mean, that's what I know. when I went to Kauai, uh, just a couple of years ago, just when we were getting ready to plant a church there, it was everywhere. There's like, there's, Shin, there's like these different temples, Buddhist yeah. temples. I think it was like a Shinto temple. Yeah. There's a couple of different stores you walked in that was just like, you felt ill yeah. when you're walking in just all this like comedicist, comedic Egyptian guy. I think you're a uh, boy right here. You might want to hang out with you. <laughs> it's all good. We're just getting into the good stuff here, buddy. Can you sit on my lap for, for five minutes? Yeah. You want to throw some shakas to the camera? Tell people what your name is. What's your name? Eliyahu. Eliyahu? Uh-huh. That's what's awesome. Your, what's your full name? Eliyahu Ikeika Shalom. Eliyahu Ikeika Shalom Haina Palazolo. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. It's that's a little, awesome. little blend of, of Hebrew and yeah. Hawaiian. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's so cool. It's Eliyahu Ikeika yeah. Shalom Haina. Yeah. Daddy. So, what does that mean? Daddy, what is that? So, Eliyahu is a Hebrew word for Elijah. And then... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, hey, go grab your coloring book over there, bud. I'll be there in a couple of minutes, okay? Um, so, yeah, we got Eliyahu, Hebrew word for, for Elijah. We've got Ikaika, which means strength in Hawaiian. Yeah. Eliyahu, Ikaika, Shaloha. He's, he's, he's grabbed like the light, I think. Okay. You want. Can we redo this? Yeah. Yeah. If you <laughs> want to do it another time, like we yeah. can just. We can just... I, I, I can. I can get him set up with uh, with my friend to yeah, watch him. Yeah, yes, that's, that's totally fine. He's just kind of like he he had too many espresso shots. This <laughs> He's all excited about the Reformation. I know Reformation the, plus espresso, espresso. Yeah, just to be here with yeah. you guys, we're, we're big fans of Kurdish. Yeah. My awesome, wife and man. I. I'm gonna 
I'm going to come back in five minutes. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Will that work with your that's yeah, cool. That works. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, what do you think about this like so far? I mean, when you talk about just like being here, I mean, just for, for us, it's like it's always cool to like all the content that we make constantly, but all of a sudden you see the face behind somebody who's impacted. Like, you know, we have somebody, you know, with, like with Ashley we just talked to or the previous guy, but also like people on the North Shore like listen to us. And I mean, he's definitely – even when you talk about just being a Christian, even outside the realm of Reformed theology, being a Christian versus just the amount of New Ageism and paganism that's on a place like Hawaii. Like, it's just cool to always see, like, the face behind um, all the people who listen to our podcast. Well, like, what do you enjoy the most about these events? Yeah, I love getting to see the people that listen to Apologia Studio stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really cool to see, like you said, the faces behind the people that are being affected by it right and it really helps put things in perspective that you're not just going behind a table and speaking on a mic right yeah like it can you don't want that to become monot monotonous right mm -hmm. you want to understand that there are people who are listening people who are created in the image of god and this is helping them in some way and it helps us as well you know it's almost yeah. cathartic in a sense every time yeah. you get to sit behind a mic because mm -hmm. you're sitting there doing research for x amount of time you yeah. want to put uh passion and thought and get jesus out through the mic and then understanding that when people are coming up to you and they're saying hey this helped me in this way or this helped me in yeah. that way you go all glory to god it had to be god yeah. alone because we're fools yeah i mean well, the thing is too is like we're just having a conversation like we we just did a podcast on uh the true crop prime True crime podcast on Jeff on the Jeffrey Dahmer and the Scott, cultist true crime story. Yeah, cultist true crime story, and we you know, it's got like twenty something down, twenty thousand somewhat downloads. But it's like that's an individual person who maybe they're enamored by the whole culture conversation, given the Netflix series. But now all of a sudden they're listening to our podcast, and now all of a sudden they're getting they're understanding how you can actually give an accounting for evil. They're getting the gospel like through that avenue. So it's always just a cool thing. And you, you, who knows the ripple effect of that? It's always a cool thing, cool thing to see. No, absolutely. I love that. Yeah. We don't know what God's doing or yeah. what he's up to, but what's cool about reform con is sometimes you can see how he's actually working and doing things. Yeah. Cause we're behind here. We don't get to see everyone who's listening, Yeah. but you know, once a year or once every other year, we get to actually see the faces uh, of the people who are being up, are being affected by this podcast and that's an awesome thing to be able to see mm -hmm. and it's also extremely refreshing to come here and listen to a bunch of people uh not a bunch of people but the speakers in general uh mm -hmm. to to breathe truth into you and yeah. into what's going on in the world it's refreshing yeah i mean just like listening to david bonds and him just like talking about economics or even talking about technology that is technology really a result of the fall like no that's people like emulating and imaging god like you know i have my iphone which I've done just a couple of posts that li you know literally take a take a picture, upload it, and it's reached thousands of people. Yeah. You know whether it was something about a recent appearance in Ali Bastucky or if it was just a funny uh, meme. That was pretty funny, by the way. That that Dom meme I and mean, that had to be tongue in cheek for oh, sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that the, the Don as uh, Adam and Eve. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. the OG man. Yeah. We're talking about there's this meme that someone shares. Supposedly there's a uh, <clears throat> some university had done some sort of rendering or use AI to figure out what Adam looked like. I think it was Princeton. Yeah, it was Princeton, but it looked exactly like Vin Diesel. Yeah, it was definitely fake. Yeah, so I, I had to like play with it, and yeah. I was like, from one man came every family. I can't, I can't, I, w I wish I could somehow, like just for one word, because it like to do like the Vin Diesel voice, he's got that raspiness. It's such a unique voice. I wonder if there's actually anyone out there who could do a, a Vin Diesel impression. You're pretty good at impressions. I think you should just give it a shot real quick. No, nah, I can't. Three, two, one. I've got family. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work that time. Well, but I'm about to have that's family. Okay. But what I like, willing, what about, I like about Re Reform Con is we had, a, I think it was David Reese who spoke yesterday. Yeah. He talked about Islands of Liberty. Mm. I think essentially Reform Con is that for people. Yeah. You know, like you, you're out in the world living the Christian life. Uh, you know, church is supposed to be like that every single Sunday. That's for yeah. sure. But when you're getting a bunch of people from a bunch of different churches together, mm -hmm. uh, this is a, an awesome place for us to express the glory of God to Christ uh, 
together. Yeah. This is an island of liberty here. Mm-hmm. It's like a safe retreat in a way. Yeah. And it was also, it was kind of cool. I mean, it, it, like talking about like a blast from the past, like seeing Jeff do his, uh, have you, have, have you seen him do that before? Uh, I think I've seen videos. Yes. I actually okay. watched, uh, have you one, seen him do it in person? I, well, no, I, okay. I, I've watched, uh, MTV back in the day when he was actually on it. I watched that show. Final oh, food, the final food. Yeah. Yeah. I where, remember where the episode yeah. where he kicks the guy in the stomach Yeah, and he gets in trouble for it. Yeah. I, I watched that, but I never knew who. Pastor Jeff was at the time, yeah. but I actually watched that when it first came out. But I've seen him do th- those things when we actually did some karate classes at Apologia when yeah. I was living here in Arizona. Yeah, they had some like really weird rules. Yeah. It was like you could only punch, you could like punch to the middle of the stomach. So it was like this weird version of like rock'em sock'em robots it, it was well the guy was kind of that he was like sparring against was kind of getting a little cocky too yeah and then jeff just like he just showed him like this yeah. is this is what's up yeah you i have, remember that sometimes you got clap back a little bit yeah he clapped <laughs> back and it was it was really good yeah even the guy was like oh you're right well this is just something too i mean uh, this is and i want to show grace because again people some people like on our instagram post thought this was like j- footage of jeff at a church Oh, <laughs> so people are like, just going super secret sensitive, you know, and I'm like, what, what? you realize this is the conference, right? And Jeff has four, like five black belts. Like, this is what he does. Yeah. People wanted to see it. Yeah. Anyways, let's go jump back on, man. It's part of what happens. Uh, I'm probably going to be experiencing that too. I'm getting married uh, December 3rd and then, uh, and then and, I'll probably have them be in that same situation soon, Lord willing. <laughs> Blessings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Well, welcome back. Uh, yeah, so talking about uh, the North Shore of Kauai, like you talked about, you know, you do evangelism there, but what's the spirit, the aesthetic of uh, of just the islands when it, when it comes to just the religious syncretism there? Yeah. Okay, so I would say that Hawaii is a place where people from all over the world, especially the continental U.S., want yeah. to come and reinvent themselves. Mm-hmm. They want to come and have an awakening. They want to come and be enlightened. They want yeah. to come and and find God, or they want to come and be, actually become God. Yeah. And a lot of people think that they are God. And then I demonstrate to them pretty quickly that they're not Yeah. through a series of questions and whatever. But anyways, um, to answer your question, what is it like in Hawaii in general? I would say that Hawaii is intrinsically Christian mm-hmm. because at one point in time, it was a, it was a fully Christian monarchy um, that, that was sovereign and they had a constitution that was more godly than, than our American constitution. Mm-hmm. But um, over time, like a lot of the missionary kids, the missionaries are f- completely sold out for the gospel, but their kids, they, um, they ended up becoming like aristocrats and really wealthy and kind of like you, you see in ancient Israel too, you know, you, you, you'll have like a generation where they're faithful to God and then the next generation, they forget the things of the Lord and they engage yep. in, in idolatry. Then they get carried off to Babylon. We kind of seen the same thing in Hawaii, I think, um, so a, a lot of the, the grandchildren of these missionaries, they, they just turned their heart from God and just engaged yeah. in all forms of, of um, pleasures. Di- just thank you. Pleasures, mm-hmm. different uh, world religions that help them escape from this idea of, of their own convictions or sin or from their, you know, what their grandparents had, had laid out. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Am I, am I answering your question? No, it's good. It's, <laughs> it's really good. Man. No, it's really, it's really good. Yeah. But then also talk about when you, cause you mentioned like questions you ask people. Yeah. Um, there's videos too of like when we, when we've gone to Kauai where Jeff is talking with people who are new age and just, it's very much relational. Yeah. Um, that's very the aesthetic of Hawaii. But, yeah. um, but yeah, like what, when you go to the North shore, cause that's, would you say just cause you have surf culture? Yes. Did you ever see a documentary riding giants? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, so like mm-hmm. it talks about that. Our guy like Laird Hamilton yeah. and kind of like that whole culture there. But in many ways, the, the North Shore would be kind of like the Areopagus of the surf culture Absolutely. in Hawaii. Yeah, and just to clarify, um, like you've got the North Shore of Kauai, yeah. which is uh, – it, it's like a, a surf mecca in its own right. Mm-hmm. However, um, the, the true surf mecca – is the North Shore of Oahu. Mm. And that's where you have the seven mile miracle. Yeah. 
which is a seven mile stretch of literally like like thousands of surf breaks. Yeah. And for a good eight to ten months out of the year, you have that place just gets blasted with tons of swell that comes down from Alaska. It comes down from the Aleutian Islands. Oh wow. Um like near Japan mm -hmm. and then Alaska and just all of the Pacific there okay. brews and it sends these swells and it slams right into the, the North shore of Oahu. And it also slams into the North shore of Kauai too. Mm -hmm. But then the North shore of Oahu, of Oahu is where all the nations come. Yeah. It's where the, the whole entire surf world is and everybody is worshiping. So, so you do have, it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic there because you, you have a, a place that once was a Christian monarchy and it's still intrinsically Christian. You've got the doxology uh -huh. in Hawaiian and all yeah. local people from Hawaii know the doxology. Right. Um, no, no matter how pagan they, they might be. Yeah. But then what, what has happened is there's just a lot of brokenness and a, I think a lot of local people have accepted or tried to synchronize different forms of like ancient Hawaiian spiritual belief, which yeah. is is uh, polytheistic and different worship mm -hmm. of these false gods. So there's been this synchronism of that. And then, the, and then that opens the door to the new age yeah. and the new age has come and people all over, you know, the States have, 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 have fled there trying to find refuge there, trying yeah. to reinvent themselves. So it's just this crazy, like cosmic buffet of like anything and everything. But when it comes down to actually Jesus, it's like, well, that's too much, you know. It's it, that's the only name that's blaspheme. It's the only name that can be, that that can save, and that's also the name that brings conviction. Um, wow. So yeah, that's kind of the spiritual climate yeah. of the North Shore, and then you've got Christians there too. There's actually a lot of Christians on the North Shore of Oahu, and and I would say Kauai as well. Yeah. Um, but you know, the the culture affects people, and. Uh, the, the culture, un, un, like either the church is going to affect the culture or the culture is going to affect the church. And in many ways, I, I think the church has kind of made Christianity like this, this privatized mm. thing yeah. that they do in their churches. Yeah. Where, whereas for my wife and I, we've been like, hey, we have this mm. incredible opportunity to cross the street. Yeah, from, from where the church where the churches are, because they're all like on the coast. Go across the street to the beach, yeah, and go proclaim the gospel to the nations. Jesus mm -hmm. said, "Go to all all nations." Well, guess what, guys? All the nations come right to us. They're That's on so the north cool. shore, so it's it's a really it's a really fun place yeah. to do evangelism. Well, yeah, what is um what's the Hawaiian word for like family? We, oh, ohana. Ohana. So yeah. where where does that uh, come from essentially, and how can uh, I know you said prosperity begets uh, essentially unfaithfulness and forgetfulness like we see with uh, the Israelites going into the promised land and we have the Shema, for example, and God really hitting through Moses to make your children remember uh, what God has done, although they forget and we get the judges and stuff like that. Uh, Ohana seems to be like a, a very Christian-like mindset, but these, but it seems like are there... Like people are living there, but forgetting the Christian roots of Hawaii in general, like forgetting about the foundation <clears throat> in which most of the prosperity came from. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say so. Um, I mean, to, to answer your question, too, like H Hawaii is very family based um, and it's all about aloha which is, which is love. And it's like the love of God. And it's also like the breath of God that sustains us. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so Hawaii is very family oriented. It's very uh, community based. So you, you can't just really go to Hawaii and just start like trying to convince people of certain things. You got to actually get to know people. Mm -hmm. and, and not to say that you need to do barbecues with people for five years right. before you can preach the gospel. Right. However, you need to preach the gospel in, in word and use words. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 100%. But you also need to preach the gospel. Um, in, in Hawaii, 
I think with how you live your life and really engaging with yeah. people in, in, in everyday just lifestyle. Yeah. And your island's a lot bigger, but even like in Hawaii, you'll be in an instance where you really, in Kauai, you don't, you, it's very a short amount of space. You only have a couple of the different towns that are really notable yeah. where it's like, okay, well, you could be in a gospel conversation with someone on the beach and it might even be, an, it might just be like an intense conversation. Yeah. And then, you know, if we're out here in Arizona or like you're out in Utah, like you get to go home, you'll probably never see that person again, more than likely. But sure. it's like the culture of Hawaii, like you're more likely going to run into that person at the store like yeah. two hours later. Well, That's everybody's going to know who you are right off the bat because yeah. everybody knows everybody. Yeah. And it's really family oriented. Ohana, like we mm -hmm. just talked about. So when you come into Hawaii and you're not from Hawaii, it's like, yeah. who are these guys? Yeah. Instantly. And instantly the pe people are guarded too because a mm -hmm. lot of people come and they just take you know yeah. pe people come like from southern california you, you sell a cardboard box um on the side of the freeway They're like like the junkest house ever and it's like almost a yeah. million dollars and then you, you go to some country place in hawaii kind of more pre-covid and you can buy like a pretty nice home with with some aina with some land on it mm -hmm. so you get all these people that aren't from there who are who are jacking up the, the property taxes yep. and pushing yeah. out the local people. And then, you know, there's a, there's a lot of brokenness in, historically in Hawaii yeah. as well. There's a big move that they call the sovereignty movement <clears throat> just because they want to reclaim the island. That's a big part of the culture there. Yeah. Do you find that that relativism and syncretism has made a, a search for Aloha and a search for Ohana in a sense that if you lose the standard in which those things are formulated from, which is God and his word, that there is now through syncretism is the expression of what's going on in Hawaii is the search to actually try to find it, but they're looking for different gods in a sense. For sure. I think that a lot of people, um, I think deep down inside, they know to a degree the truth, mm -hmm. especially considering the fact that, like I keep reiterating that, I, I believe Hawaii is intrinsically Christian. There's the, this foundation, these roots that are that are Christian. Yeah. But they'll they'll try and explore other things, like this idea of going yeah. back to the Kapu system, yeah. which was the ancient system, of mm -hmm. w which was incredibly oppressive. But <clears throat> some people are are not looking at the the full picture, and they're like, "Oh, Jesus is the white man religion," right? And yeah. um, they want to go back to these things that yeah. that don't offer any life. And it's like, when you play with the fire, you're going to get yeah. burned. And I've seen that happen a lot where mm -hmm. people go and they, they engage in all this different kind of, whether it be like new age stuff in Hawaii or doing like psychedelics to try and mm -hmm. expand their consciousness or false religious yeah. stuff or the Hawaiiana stuff or trying to yeah, find their identity you, in, in the land. Mm -hmm. And then they realize that, it's all bankrupt. Yeah. And I've wow. seen people full circle come back to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Is psychedelic <clears throat> is pretty, is that pretty big on the Island? For sure. Like how, how do you see that formulated? Do people just take it for the sake of taking it? Are there like groups kind of like that do it together, like a religious ritual or even like, I remember there was one place, it was the local coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And you just go in there and they had this one thing that was really good. It was like, it was espresso, uh, Coke, like the good, not, not just like, the caramel colored Coke, but like the Mexican Coke, okay. like that. And like this vanilla flavor is the most delicious drink ever. Yeah. I just remember like I got that every single time I went in there, but um, like on the wall, there'd be this bulletin board and it was like all things like new age, this new age, <laughs> you know, Reiki energy healing, yeah. like let's do this Kumbaya. Like, yeah. You know, Basically, you could if you there was like a song you just imagine like John Lennon's imagine like playing like looking at all the all the songs and sure, stuff like that. Sure. How do you see that? Play, how do you see that playing about? <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it's just heightened there because life is slower in Hawaii, especially in Kauai, mm -hmm. and then on the Big Island where I'm from, and then even the North Shore of Oahu. I I I, I grew up on the North Shore of Oahu. That's 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 pretty much home for me. Um, but in general, you just you just get off the plane and the mentality is slower. Life is slower. People are on Hawaiian time. There's like a grace period of it's like you can be there at at, at eight o'clock in the morning. Well, if you show up at eight thirty, it's like you're still you're you're still on time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were learning that, too. Like when, when they were playing the church in Kauai, they're like, why is everyone late? Yeah. Well, it's like now then they understood. OK, all right, we'll, we'll be lenient with that. So it, it lends itself. It, it can lend itself to 
to, to being lazy and to being a slugger, but it can also lend itself to, to being real present with people yeah. and to engaging with, with people and, and really taking time to stop and, and smell the flowers, smell yeah. the roses. So, <clears throat> um, I think that your, your question was, I'm sorry. What exactly was your question? I don't remember exactly. <laughs> like and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so a lot of people are, are in Hawaii and they just have more free time on their hands, more time to try and uh, like be introspective, more time to want to, uh, explore different spiritual things. I mean, culturally, I would also say pakololo, which is the Hawaiian word for, for marijuana. That's like a big part of the culture too. Like mm-hmm. everybody just s- smokes weed. Yeah. And <clears throat> uh, I, I believe that's pharmakia. And yeah. as a, you know, as a Christian, we have no business doing those kinds of things. I mm-hmm. believe that it's just, you're, these, these people are just in, in slavery and bondage to it. Yeah. But anyway, it, it can be a gateway into other things. It, one thing that's real popular in, in Hawaii, and you'll see it in Kauai and in the Big Island, is um, there's a lot of these kind of like farms, and they're like new age farms and like organic farms, hippie yeah. farms, whatever, yeah. commune farms. And and it's it's having a banner or title of, of actually good things, eating organic food, coming together as a community, being transparent with each other, living intentionally. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with any of that stuff. Right. We're, we're called to like go and be good stewards of the land. Right. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> there's no foundation and, and the foundation is Christ. So they're just floating. And then you get different woofers. I don't know if you're familiar with that term woofers. Woofers are basically volunteer far- farmers, mm-hmm. people that will like travel the world and they'll go, vol- they'll do like work trade on, on organic farms or whatever. Yeah. So that's like a big culture in Hawaii. So you get these like woofers and they're usually college age. They're trying to find themselves and they immediately um, get engulfed in just a slurry of, of drug usage, psychedelics, um, people, you know, men trying to take advantage of these like young girls and there's just a lot of brokenness in that, but mm-hmm. that lends itself to an opportunity yeah. for people who, yeah. who, who actually have the spirit of God in them and have the gospel to go and, and engage with mm-hmm. them and meet them where they're yeah. at. And, and, and a lot of these people I would say are, are coming to Hawaii to try and find God, mm-hmm. you know? And, and I, I think there's a lot of people that, that God, God brings there in, in his providence, his sovereignty, and yeah. and is drawing them to himself. But sometimes they got to go through a lot of bumps on the road. Mm-hmm. And wow. then, like when, this conference, you know, the big thing that they've been hitting home, and because you've seen it with all the different <clears throat> speakers, is that the lordship of Christ encompasses everything from art to economics yeah. to how you live your life. Not just when you're sharing the gospel, but like, almost very emulative of what you're talking about with Hawaiian culture. Like when, with all the speakers and everything that you've heard this past weekend, yeah. like how do you, like how do you see it? You see yourself applying that like as you go back to where you're at? Yeah. First off, I just want to say that sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm I can communicate somewhat decent. Yeah. Uh, especially when people have no reference points and I can mm-hmm. almost get a little pompous and, and puffed up. <laughs> yeah. But I, I just got to say for the record, being here at reform con, listening to these guys like, like Toby and Andrew and all these hard hitters, I'm a, I'm a straight up chimpanzee. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm nervous to even open up my mouth now. I am, yeah. I'm a, incredibly insecure about myself yeah. at this moment. Yeah. We're just recognizing, um, the just these seeing these like hero heroes you know yeah but i've always realized that that like i'm a small i'm a small man but i serve a big mm-hmm. god yeah amen so um yeah this has just been real inspiring to, yeah. to say we don't have anything like this in hawaii and yeah and just even the the cultural aspects of it. i've been in culture shock since i've been mm-hmm. here yeah <laughs> um but it's been a sweet time yeah. Awesome, man. Thanks, well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you're able to chat with us. I mean, we would love at some point to come out to like either the North Shore and kind of document that. Like we were talking about it yesterday. I think that'd be like a really, really cool thing just because like we mm-hmm. mentioned with someone else is that when you look at the New Age, uh, it is it's something that encompasses. It's always different with every single culture. Like I said, with different like in India versus New Orleans versus West Virginia. Yeah. And you see it with uh 
and you, and you see it with uh, even like Hawaii. Um, so when you go, jump back to surf culture, yeah. do you remember in writing Giants at the very end, Laird Hamilton? Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I mean, he was a very famous surfer. He doesn't surf as – he's a little older, so I don't know if he surfs as much. But um, he was big into toe and surfing. Yeah, he's kind but, of like the founder of yeah, a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. but the, remember the very end where he – he, he, he's, he hits that amazing wave and it's like mind blowing. It's, it's a place called Choku or Jaws. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I don't know if I recall exactly what you're thinking of, but I, I could tell you there's a wave in Tahiti called Chopu. Yeah. I think and, that's what it's called. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's just big body of water that moves over, over, over like deep ocean and then it hits a shallow reef and it causes the wave to project and fold and create it we, we call them tubes yeah but this wave creates like a big giant cave and it's so big that you could fit a house inside it wow on on, on big swells and there wow. is a like a historical um time when when laird hamilton did uh he, he just got a really big wave on a on a historical swell on a really big day and i've 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 watched that wave that he got yeah and if i can remember correctly i think he got towed into it because mm -hmm. it's so big you yeah. can't yeah. get enough speed to paddle you actually get whipped in by a jet ski yeah and then he was in the barrel and if he would have fell in that barrel the consequences would have been so severe that it probably could have taken his life but yeah. he was able to we call it thread the tube. He was able to, to yeah. navigate that barrel and actually come out of the barrel and waves like Chopu or pipeline. It's so hollow that the wave will actually inhale. And yeah. then it, right before the wave kind of stops barreling, it will then, it will blow Whoa. and it will spit or it will, we call it like waves that spit. And yeah. if you get spit out of a barrel, that's like yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Um, like most waves in California don't even spit, but mm -hmm. a lot of waves in Hawaii do. And then yeah. this wave Chopu does, but this wave in Chopu actually vomits. Mm -hmm. like, Ugh! it like vomits you out. <laughs> yeah. So he got yeah. vomited out of the barrel and then he kicks out on the shoulder and then he just sat there and he like, if I remember correctly, he just like cried in yeah. the channel and he was just, cause, cause it's real shallow reef. Then it also goes real deep again. So boats can hang out in the deep spot and the waves don't break where the deep spot is. So yeah. it's a real spectator kind of sport, if you will. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was, that was like a historical time for surfing. That, that, that was like well over a decade ago. I was like yeah. pretty young I, at that I, time. My, my hope for Hawaii is essentially that could be the Christian history, right? Like we had the Puritan heritage. Uh, they, like you said, they were Christian monarch. That's like the towing with the jet ski, but yeah. somehow they let go. Yeah. And now, right now in the history of Hawaii is in the middle of this tube. You can either be smashed, right? And just blah, spit out, vomited out, die. Yeah. But my hope is, is, you know, like the, the wave is ridden by the grace of God and they're going to come through the tube and there'll be like a reformation resurgence, <laughs> right? Well, you want if you want to be more like Christ, you got to start surfing because Jesus is the first surfer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um, but, by the way, um, I remember I was going to get back to my point in just a second with that. We we're just chatting about with Laird, my thoughts on that. But um, someone actually gave me uh, I had a stint where I was like really interested in surfing for like two years because of that documentary. Yeah. It was just challenged because when you're like into surfing but you live in Arizona, yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> Rick like, Kane. Yeah. You guys know North Shore. What's that? Oh my goodness! Yeah. So all my friends from uh -huh. from the North Shore of Oahu are texting me, kind of making fun yeah, yeah. of me, because there's this movie called The North Shore. It came out in 1987, yeah, and it's about this guy named Rick Kane, who's from Tempe, Arizona, oh, no who really? learned how to surf in a wave pool, and then he wins the the championship wave pool contest. The waves are like knee high, and everyone's like, "Yeah." you're the man yeah <laughs> what are you gonna do and he, he gets cut a check for like a thousand dollars or something he's like raising the check over his head oh, i'm gonna go to the north shore and surf the big waves of hawaii and everyone's like yeah yeah <laughs> so then he goes to the north it's it's a real classic movie it, laird hamilton's actually in that movie back mm. in the 80s in his heyday okay other guys like jerry lopez who they call him mr pipeline ah. he's like the most classic guy but you guys gotta watch that because that's okay. like part of your guys's roots so there's this connection okay. guys <laughs> from tempe <laughs> arizona to the north shore that's why i'm here oh there yeah. we go yeah. <laughs> i love it yeah um so with Laird, though, when he was in, uh, like, it was very, like, an emotional experience. Yeah. But you talked about how it's almost like people are worshiping when yeah. it comes to that. But my thought is, is that <clears throat> just when you look at, like, oneism versus twoism, like, mm -hmm. so the oneism is, like, there's a, there's a blending of the creation, the divine, and the spiritual, and the uh, material. 
the immaterial and the, and, and the material. So there's no distinction between creator and creation, yeah. which is like in Romans 1, Paul says that people, they worship the creation <clears throat> rather than the creator. And yeah. So would it almost be an aspect where people think that they are, like they are one, like the, all is one, all yeah. is self, all yeah. is pantheistic. So yeah. when I'm actually on this tube, uh, <laughs> when I'm surfing this pipeline, sure. I guess you would say, sure. it's like I am uh, just, I am one with it. Like yeah, you're, they, you're practicing like, one is Maybe the greatest expression of, of pantheism, like you just are part of it and all that kind of thing. I, I, I think so, but you want to, when you're surfing waves like that, those are big waves. Yeah. Those are powerful waves. Death is there. And there's no atheist out in the water at that point. You right. Know, there, it's just a matter of time till you, you miss time, your, your paddle out, and you get, we call it getting caught inside, mm-hmm. and the wave ends up breaking on you. And the most hardened men are like crying out like, God save me. Yeah. Because people die every year at Pipeline. People die every year on the North Shore. Some of the best surfers in the world die on the North yeah. Shore. So. It is a worship culture. Yeah. When you're in Hawaii, you're constantly worshiping. And when you go to the North Shore, it's a mm-hmm. worship culture. What are you worshiping? You're worshiping the waves. You're worshiping the glory of the pro surfers. The sexual promiscuity is like second to none there. There's just half naked women everywhere on the yeah. beach. And they're constantly pushing the envelope in terms of like how skimpy can they get with the bathing suits. And that's yeah. just cultural. they will be like 14 year old girls dressed like that. Yeah. So, um, you go there, everybody's worshiping. And in the midst of all of these image bearers, people created by God, they're worshiping false things, not the right thing, things that are, their worship's going to go in vain. Well, the actual waves themselves, they're worshiping. Mm. Who are they worshiping? They're worshiping King Jesus. Amen. Every yeah. single wave that breaks that it's pipeline. Powerful. In order for that wave to break the way that it does, there has to be serious mechanics, serious ingenuity, and serious design. Oh, Who designed so all of that? Yeah. Jesus did. Yeah. You're right? And in Colossians 1, I believe it says that we're, all things were created by him yeah. and for him. Yeah. So waves that pipeline, when people are, are able to actually – get to a level physical yeah. conditioning to be able to surf those waves. Those waves were created by Jesus yeah. and for Jesus. And without him sustaining them and giving them the, the breath that's in their lungs, they wouldn't be able to surf those waves. All things hold together through Christ <clears throat> yep. is what it articulates. Yes. Yeah, man. That's, that's so big. That's, that's basically yeah. my message when yeah. I go to the North shore that's is, so cool. is like, those are my people. I'm able to talk that language. I, I surf those yeah. waves when we really get into it, people that don't surf, they don't even understand what we're saying. Um, and then also people that aren't from Hawaii when, you know, people are speaking pigeon, yeah. they also aren't going to yeah. really understand what's going on. Yeah. But anyway, it's, it's such an opportunity to, to just redirect that worship because mm-hmm. we're going to worship. Yeah. If we're not going to worship the King of Kings, we're going to worship something else, yeah. whether it's ourselves or our sport or some perverted thing. Mm-hmm. So it's, the North Shore is, is also a place of youthful lust, and the Bible says yeah. flee from youthful lust. So it, it's a tricky place, yeah. but it's a glorious place because God's glory is everywhere. And you cannot say that this is all of chance when you're there. Yeah. Like you are, it, it's, it's a natural phenomenon when you're on the North Shore. That's why they call it the Seven Mile Miracle. You guys got to come. Yeah, you guys got to come and do ministry with us yeah. and do evangelism with us. I've reached out to Jeff for like the past two years. Well, you've got my phone number now. And I so think we'll he's kind of softened up to me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> But I know he's got a lot on his plate, and yeah. Yeah. he's there. In, he's there in Kauai. Like his efforts are are going to be there in Kauai. But y- you just jump over to to the North Shore of Oahu. But the guys that have run the show on the North Shore of Oahu that have figured out how to surf those waves the best have actually been the guys from Kauai, from the North Shore of Kauai. So you got like Andy and Bruce Irons, and there's just a a whole slew of guys. You have what's called the Wolf Pack that was real popular. I don't know if you've heard of it. Mm-mm. It's like kind of like precede it something called Dahui, which was like a surf gang back in like the 70s and 80s. And then in the late 90s and early 2000s, you had something called the Wolf Pack. So the whole world is coming to the North Shore to try and surf these waves, particularly Pipeline. And it, it turns into a zoo. It can, the wave is super dangerous. And then you've got hundreds of people out there and broken boards and, yeah. and, and very little surf etiquette. And people are essentially going to like kill themselves or kill each other. So the wolf pack, which came out of Kauai, they were they would all post up for 
eight months out of the year, post up at the Volcom house, which is right there on the beach at Pipeline, and they would blow the whistle. And if somebody was out of line, they would escort them in and they'd just give them cracks on the beach. And it was like, it was like the wild, wild west. Mm. Um, cracks on the beach, like with like a stick or something? <laughs> guys would just get jujitsu on the beach and wow. take some serious cracks. Wow. Well, I have, I have something similar happen because <clears throat> uh, I would go out to San Diego and I would surf. And there's one time we're right by where the Navy SEALs, um, I'm giving it away, um, but I'm like right out close to where the Navy SEALs train. Yeah. And I didn't realize it's like that. Camp Pendleton area. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like out there surfing, but all of a sudden, you know, the waves were just, I was very inexperienced. I was just trying to get out there and have some fun. But all of a sudden, I, I didn't realize I was getting drifted. And all of a sudden, there's uh, two military police who were like out on the uh, beach, just like blowing whistles, telling me like, get, uh, in, yeah. get in. And I was, I thought that, and the funny thing was like, I, mean, I thought they were like looking out for me, like, oh, there must be like sharks in the water or something like that. So I, of course, I, you know, I told them, I'm like, oh gosh, thanks for looking out for me. He's like, yeah, you're a military property, can't be here. I'm like, oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it, it sounds kind of similar. One thing that was kind of interesting too is that um, where I was going with it when I was out in San Diego, is that there's a guy named Jimmy. He actually gave me this book. It was called Da Jesus Book. Da Jesus Book. Yeah, yeah and I it was uh, it was a New Testament. It was written in Hawaiian pidgin. Yeah, and it's like even my friend thought it was like he had a hard time reading it. He thought they were like making a joke. Yeah, but this is like for real. Like they're yeah. saying, no, this is for real. This is like how they talk. This yeah. is how they communicate. Have you ever read one of those? Or da what Jesus you... Book. Yeah, yeah, I've I've preached quite a few times at, at our local church. We go to a Baptist church in North Kohala. Yeah. And sometimes I'll, I'll open up my sermon and read just straight out of the Jesus book. Um, give, give, give like Andrew an example, <clears throat> like give a Bible verse. Like how would you, do you know, do you have any oh, Bible man. verses memorized in the Jesus it's book? It's so it's hard to speak pigeon when you're do like John out one. of context. John 1, 1. <laughs> the logos? Like, um, you have an idea of what you'd say? Oh man, it, it'd be hard for me to Anyone? do Anyone? Like John three sixteen. Like, uh, I, to like, I just feel like I just wouldn't do justice to yeah, it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it would just be so corny no, and let me, stupid. Let me, let, me, let me look it up. Maybe look it up. We'll have some fun here. I'm trying if, to get if you can look it here. up, I can read it. Hey, yeah, and I can up. read it. Well. I got to go to the bathroom really bad. Okay, okay, give me one yeah. second. It's actually a good translation. It's like theologically well done. Okay, let's go over a couple of verses, and we'll we'll do the we'll do John one one. Yeah. Uh, let's just say the Jesus book, John. Three, John three sixteen. Yeah, John three sixteen. All right. Uh, yeah, it's on. Bible, it's actually on BibleGateway.com. Nice. See, it's a legit translation. Okay, guys. so I wouldn't even want to try and say it because I feel like I would butcher it too. Okay. This is John three sixteen, Hawaiian pigeon. I'm gonna try my best. Okay, right. here we go. <clears throat> God, we get so plenty love and aloha for the people inside the world. That he went send me, his one and only boy, <laughs> so that everybody that trusts me no get cut off from God, but get the real kind life that stay to the max forever. Oh, dude, that is so <laughs> awesome! That is so cool, and people are like, I love that because, dude, I like I used to go on mission trips a lot to Mazatlan, Mexico, to like Mexico. Mm -hmm. And like being able to hear, like sometimes it's like you could hear something, you know what they're saying, but you know it's like in another language. Mm -hmm. And like when I first got saved, I remember like one of the first hymns I remember like singing with a changed heart was like, holy, holy, holy. So instead of like God in three persons, mm -hmm. like blessed Trinity, it was dos en tres pisionos, bless your Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, that's just so rad. That is so cool. Yeah. Um, but you yeah. Know you know what's really powerful is singing the doxology in hawaiian really yeah yeah they're talking like what is it like how do, how do you say the doxology in, in hawaiian? hawaiian yeah do you know it can you say off a fly <clears throat> oh man i'll just butcher it <laughs> <laughs> like whenever when everybody's singing it i, I can kind of chime in but yeah. just to hold it mm. I, yeah i just i guess some local local people would like counsel you guys if i oh if no i try to do it oh no it's all it's all good it's all good it's all good um yeah, what's like, what's I, what's I going to ask too? Um, like, what's an example of like anybody? Like, what's the most interesting conversation you've ever had? Like, the one that like, is there something that just like really stands out? Just real quickly. In in Hawaii. Yeah, just like on the North Shore, is the one that just kind of sticks out to you. 
Like, is there a specific example you can think of? If not, no worries. Just curious. Yeah, I mean, there's so many. Um, I think I I just think local people that are like from like Hawaiian or from Hawaii, they have actually more of a softness in their heart for the gospel, mm-hmm. and even if they're super hardened, like I've I've preached the gospel to the boys that are just all tatted up, just drinking drinking BS, going BS, BS, smoking Pakololo, and just talking amok. Yeah. And I've I felt different times called to go and just mm-hmm. boldly just just engage with these guys and yeah. meet them where they're at and point them to Christ. And almost mm-hmm. every time I do that, yeah. these guys will like end up in tears towards the end of the conversation. Wow. And they'll just talk about how they know they need to get their lives right with the Lord. And yeah. Like we need to go back to church and mm-hmm. yeah, you know, so cool. <clears throat> I've had a lot of experiences like that. One, one other one I, I'll, I'll leave you with this experience is um, this was recent. So we're at the beach at pipeline mm-hmm. and uh, there's this guy that, when, when you're hanging out there, when you're there for a while, you start to kind of get to know everybody and, mm-hmm. and familiar faces. And yeah. there was this person who was sitting there and he was just kind of doing his own thing. And I just came over to him and I asked him, I said, I, I, I just asked him his name. We started talking, we got into the conversation, talking about the waves, talking about surfing. And then I said, um, so who are you worshiping? Yeah. And it just totally threw him off. He didn't yeah. know how to answer that question. And then perfect wave breaks right in front of us while we're sitting on the beach. And I said, well, who is that wave worshiping? And he just had no idea how to answer that. He's just like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And then I was able to drop Colossians 1 on him and basically just share the gospel with him. And, and towards the end of that conversation, he was... Uh, you know, he was convicted, he was compelled, he wanted a Bible, and there, there, there's some good fellowships there, yeah. and we're, we're, we're good, we try and partner with, with all the, the local churches there on the okay. North Shore, and then we're able to invite them to, to church on Sunday, or a Bible study, or whatever, and it, in proximity, it's very close, it's all like walking distance, so nice. I'd say that was like, a pretty awesome, that's super awesome, that is experience, awesome. Yeah. and so as situation. we wrap up here, like, uh, cause I know this is like one of your favorite verses. Like whenever you talk about the gospel, you're always like the word made flesh. Like that's always going to come yeah. out when you talk John about one, it. One, man. So here we go. John oh. one, one Hawaiian pigeon. Uh, this is, like this is one of my favorite verses. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So yeah. this is Hawaiian pigeon and like, this is your culture. So I just want to, this is like the Andrew. I just want to look at Andrew. This is the Andrew reacts to Hawaiian <laughs> okay. pigeon video. Here we go. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm, okay. Let's, let's see if I can do, do this somewhat decent the time every everything had start had one guy God's talk that's who him that guy and God they stay together and the guy stay God for real kind that's the guy the time every the time every every thing had start him and God stay together. God will make every thing, but the way He do, um, He tell this guy for do him. no more nothing. This guy never make. He the guy, if you like come alive for real kind. You come by him, cause that kind life come from him. When people come alive, la like that, just la like that, <laughs> they they stay inside one place that get plenty light. Then they can see and understand. No matter stay dark, the dark no can peel the light. Every time, get light. <laughs> wow. 
That's cool. Yeah. That's actually yeah. really cool. Yeah. And it's interesting too. I mean, for anyone who's like, wait, what? It's like, you know what that verse is if you're a Christian, but like this is their culture is hearing the exact same thing, but this is their native tongue or this is their, or their dialect of, of how they talk. So, so you guys know where pigeon came from? Uh uh-uh. Where to come up? So Hawaii was, uh, it was all like a plantation, sugarcane yeah. plantation. So you had the missionaries that came, brought the gospel from 19, from 1820. It was, it was all just a, a pagan nation. Mm-hmm. And from 1820 to 1840, it became the most Christianized nation in the world. Yeah. Also became the most literate nation in the world too. Wow. Because Hawaiians were learning how to read so they could read the word of God. Um, but shortly after that is when uh, the sugarcane industry came Mm -hmm. and they brought in Chinese immigrants. They brought in Japanese, Filipinos, and you had Hawaiians mixed in there. And, um, you had all these different, and, and also you had Portuguese, um, and Puerto Ricans and they all were there and they couldn't really Mm. speak, you know, really well English. Yeah. So they just kind of created their own dialect. Right. And that, so that was the birth of Pigeon, yeah. Wow. Mm. That guy awesome. was there. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, that's yeah. so cool. Well, everything was. Yeah. That's cool. And uh, thanks so much for chatting here. We got one more guy. We got Joe. Yeah, we yeah. Got thanks jump for on having here. me on, guys. Dude, thanks, I am dude. excited. We got to be, we gotta be in touch, and yeah. I would love to come out with North Shore and talk uh, with these guys, man. Do it. Be so yeah, awesome. I'll get you guys some waves. Don't worry. Awesome. I've never been there, so I'd love, I'd love to see it. Yeah, it would blow your mind. You guys got to come to my farm. We got a turmeric farm in, in Kohala. Oh, nice. Nice. On uh, the northern tip of the Big Island. Okay. Okay. Come there. Sweet. We'll get centered, drink some turmeric shots. <laughs> okay. Do a little surf training, then we'll go fly out to the North Shore. Awesome. Sweet, bro. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. All right, guys. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. Praise God. Sorry for interrupting your currently scheduled programming, but did you know you can go to apologiastudios.com and become an all access member? With all access membership, you get exclusive content from all of Apologia Studios productions. Not to mention Cultish is an Apologia Studios production, so you'll get access to Cultish The Aftermath, where Jerry and I talk together after our most recent series, discussing what we thought. It's really cool. We have a lot of fun doing it. And, you know, we can't do this without the studio. It keeps the lights on. And we can't also do this without you. So please go to ApologiaStudios.com and become an all-access member. Now back to the programming. What's up, man? What's up? All right. Tell them where, where, tell where you're from. I am from Ireland. Dublin. Uh, you're from Dublin. Dublin originally, yeah. Okay. How'd you, how'd you find out about us? You've been um, following us for a couple of years. Yeah, just through uh, Apologia Studios and following different events that was going on there. And then getting to connect with different people yeah. that are part. Maybe like a, you appeared on a guest show and yeah. go, okay, who's that guy? Right. Let me follow that guy. He's, he's saying something good. Yeah. So, so it's, it's very interesting just because, you know, we're, this is reform com or right. Reformation days, like right around the corner. Uh, you know, you're dealing with all that, but there's just a very unique distinction between Catholic and Protestant. Like yeah. I got a story I want to tell you and get your thoughts on, but maybe like explain like, it's not. It's not just the theology, but it's also culture. Yeah. It's, how uh, do you how do you briefly explain that to people who don't know? Basically, Ireland was taken over by the British, and and then was divided in the 1920s. So there's always been since the 1920s a political divide between Catholics and Protestants. Yeah. Uh, which has turned into more political than actual Protestants and Catholics about Jesus. Yeah. So most people in Ireland, the Southern, are about 89 percent Catholic. Yeah. But we have uh, abortion and gay marriage voted in by the people, mm. by these supposed 89% uh, Catholic, Protestant, yeah. uh, uh, Catholics. Up north is the same. Well, yeah. So Northern Ireland is mostly Protestants yeah. and uh, population. So Right. Well, yeah, so just I'll tell you the story in that context. Uh, back in 2008, uh, we were uh, I went to Ireland with a buddy of mine, my brother. And so we were having some fun in Southern Ireland, but then we decided to go to North to check out Belfast. And as soon as we got there, there's like a different spirit or aesthetic yeah. where everyone was kind of like closed and like closed off. Yeah. And you could like feel it in the air as soon as you saw the British flag. Yeah. And so finally we got to Belfast and there's like not a soul around. And somebody told us, he goes, well, it's probably not a good time to be up here if you're a tourist. I'm like, why is that? He's like, oh, well, today's Protestant Day. Mm, July the 12th. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was up there in July the 12th. And we go around this corner and, and lo and behold, there it is. We have a, uh, a whole uh, bonfire getting ready of pallets 
that are basically going to be dousing gasoline with an Irish flag on top. Yeah. Uh, Why? It's uh, it's from the Battle of the Boyne. Where I live in Ireland, it's about 20 minutes away from the event. So there was two historical battles, really. Uh, Cromwell's Battle, which yeah. uh, made uh, England become a republic, and then the Battle of the Boyne. So a Dutch king invaded Ireland, uh, had a fight with an English king that was already taken over Ireland. They had a battle uh, 20 minutes from my house, and um, since then they've they've been having these marches ever since. The, in my opinion, anyway, the, it's not good. It's more political, and then yeah, the people that live in these areas have to everything shuts down for them. So yeah, and then you have the other side as well that. You know, they have their matches as well, mm -hmm. marching bands and stuff. So yeah. basically it's called the Orange Order. Yeah. But the Orange Order is Masonic in, in nature. So mm. but that's that's a whole different story. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's interesting, as I, we were driving back down to where our hotel was in Dublin, you could see all the different bonfires, like yeah. just all across the countryside. We actually drove one like right by one that was, uh, I think it was just a bunch of hooligans and they, they had yeah. a pretty rowdy one. Yeah, uh, it was it's, interesting. it's a drinking event for most people. Oh, yeah. It's, it's very little to do with culture anymore. Almost like how and, we... Uh, it's supposed to celebrate yeah. the Protestant victories over Catholics, but <laughs> most of the people they defeated yeah. were actually English, which is the same people that, yeah. uh, that they're loyal to. Yeah. So the Northern Ireland people are supposed to be loyal to the crown, yeah. but they celebrate two victories <laughs> just, that just happened to happen in yeah. Ireland. But have nothing to do with Irish history, yeah. And it's like a victory over the Irish and the Catholics. Yeah. But the the king was English, mm. hmm. so. What's the most interesting cult to you? Because I know you, I know you follow cultish. Cult. Yeah, um, what, what cult sticks out to you? That I you find the Mormons the most interesting. What? How really? So? Yeah, it's. I've, uh, ever since I was a young kid, we used to have Mormons visit our housing estate, and uh, we we got on very well with these people. And there was actually one guy that got killed. Uh, a used, missionary? Yeah, a missionary, really? yeah. And he, they used to come, you know, sweets and yeah. throw the American football and everybody was like, wow, what's mm -hmm. this? And uh, we formed a nice relationship. Now, we weren't interested in anything he had to say, but we were interested in the in the sweets and the candy and yeah. stuff like that. So so ever since then, I've always had a fascination with Mormon people mm -hmm. and more so when I became a Christian. Yeah. So uh, I've met actually so many of them. Yeah. I was surprised to hear the stories that yeah. Jesus came to America and interesting. Yeah. Brig yeah, Brigham himself went to to England many like yeah. a few times. I'm not sure if it was um, was it the Mormons that there was an Irish guy involved. Yeah, and he was selling some ancient documents. Yeah, oh. he was like a traveling salesman or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that, I was like, right. "Here we go again. Right. The, Ar yeah. the Irish are getting the blame for everything." Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so funny. Who um? A total side note. What, what would you say is the most in American cinema? Like what actor has done the most authentic Irish accent? What's the what's the best and what's the, the worst? Best one. Uh, I don't think there is the best one to be honest. <laughs> but the worst one is definitely Tom Cruise. Oh, from Far and Away. Far and Away. Everyone, everyone Tell says that. Tell me you like that. me hat. Tell yeah. me you like me hat. We, <laughs> we actually don't have Lucky Charms in Ireland either. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> you don't have any at all. No, don't sell no, Lucky it's, Charms. It's probably a Boston invention, like yeah. the fighting Irish as well. We don't. Right. We don't have many people. Fighting Irish anymore? Really? Yeah. So I want to tell you, and we don't actually eat yeah. corned beef and cabbage either. Yeah. Really? No, You're like just blowing my mind no, right now. Yeah. All American. Sorry yeah. to disappoint you. Yeah. Wow. So many people come to Ireland expecting right. corned beef and cabbage. Mm -hmm. Do you have Captain Crunch? I don't even know what it is. Wow. Here. So yeah. we don't have. Okay. So Captain it's not Crunch just Irish? the Lucky yeah. Charms. No. Okay. Yeah. So I, I guess we, we'd call that poison. <laughs> 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 There's so much chemicals in it. So yeah. We were totally right. I got a question. I guess uh, another story I got to tell you. Give me your thoughts on. And I don't know how much of this is exaggerated, but I uh, I used to work at Costco and I worked in the meat department. And one of my managers, his name was Tom, and he was from Ireland. He had a thick, heavy Irish accent. Uh, he's from there. He immigrated over here, and he had told me the story because we were talking about the same conversation about. What, what's the best Irish accent? And he ended up telling me the story his friends told. I know, know how much of it was exaggerated. Uh, so I never saw the movie, but there's a Brad Pitt movie called The Devil's Own oh, yeah. actually, with Harrison Ford. I'll retract my statement. That's actually a decent uh, accent. That's a decent accent. Yeah. Okay. So Brad Pitt's a great actor, and he really takes a lot of thought into his role. So apparently there's a story when he was doing prep for the role, he wanted to get an understanding of – those areas in Ireland where it's full of IRA. Yeah. And so he tried to be like all discreet with like a ball cap and sunglasses. It was kind of going around taking pictures. Not a good yeah, idea. Yeah, apparently <laughs> stuck out as a sore thumb. So there's actual people in the IRA who like 
apparently like grabbed and kind of like abducted him and sit down and had a hard conversation. We're like in his face. Yeah. Um, and we're saying like, who are you? Like, what are you doing? He's like, no, I'm Brad Pitt. And the guy responded, yeah, and I'm the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> That's a common response. Yeah. yeah. That happened to us. We were in Northern Ireland and yeah. uh, we were evangelizing in Belfast. So we were staying in a mainly pr- Protestant loyalist area. So on the walls, they have all these people with guns and balaclavas and stuff yeah. like that. So we, we had Dublin re- registration mm-hmm. on our cars. So we just parked anywhere. And uh, we, we got a knock on the door late at night. Who are you? So the guy that was with us had to go on the drive with basically this guy from the neighborhood mm-hmm. who was that guy yeah. that, that looked after him. So uh, we've seen that. I've seen paramilitary marches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we went on holiday with two Spanish girls and mm-hmm. just randomly stayed in a like a hostel. I yeah. Woke up the next day, there was a full military parade. And I'm in the back of the taxi, like scared as hell. <laughs> and these two Spanish <laughs> girls are thinking that the music is Irish, so yeah. they clap in their hands and mm. I've I've seen so many strange yeah. things in this journey with God and right. it's it's been amazing to, you know. Yeah, what, what's like with, when you think about just the culture of Irish and talking about it, and we mentioned we're here at Reform Con, and, and I mentioned to one of the previous uh, person that was on here behind the mic with us, we're really, this really putting on the emphasis on how the Lordship of Christ encompasses everything, mm-hmm. like economics, uh, like how you conduct relationships, both with God, with your neighbor, uh, all of that. When it comes to, I mean, and there's a lot of things that are different between here in the United States, here in Arizona, versus mm-hmm. where you live in Dublin, like, what are like the big takeaways? Like, how do you see applying like every, everything you're learning here, and just for you as a Christian, uh, like in Ireland, like how do you, how do you live that out? Uh, just from what I've heard here, it's, it starts in the home for for everything. Yeah. If you're not doing that at home, you're, you're hardly going to affect the culture around you. Yeah. So if if you're a good husband and good wife and all that, and your your kids are being raised in the Lord, God is doing all the work anyway. He, mm-hmm. You know, he he allows us to be used. For His glory, you know, yeah. and it, and sometimes we forget about that, and we think, oh, God needs me to do this, God needs me to do that. God doesn't need anything from me, you know. So um, with me, with uh, Jeff and all, they start the abortion ministry in Ireland. So there's a good core of people there that yeah. that have gotten that idea and sort of ran with it. So have you gone start small, you know? Yeah. So yeah. how do they, when you go do like abortion ministry out there, like what does that look like? Are there's because Planned Parenthood, that's a really an American we, we've thing, had or, like but do they, do they do it in the hospitals or yeah uh, they do it in hospitals which are used for other things yeah so the the big argument there is how could you stand outside because women are going in for different things you don't know they're going in for abortion plus we're also so far away from the facilities to actually you know talk to these people so right but we've developed relationships with people walking by doctors have come out so thanks so much for what you are doing yeah now what you are doing is difficult Thanks so much. Yeah. And that's encouraging because it's not the same fight as it is here. You can't just stand outside with a big megaphone and, you know, the police are aggressive as well. We've had many issues with the police in uh, different areas. Yeah. Actually come up. We have had reporters take pictures of us because we stood there with the babies that murdered here signs. Mm. And that's freaked out people. So when I was younger, I would say in my... uh, younger years like college around that time i became a huge u2 fan <laughs> right okay and you're like oh boy <laughs> well let's just say when they came out in support of repealing the eighth amendment yeah. i was like we're done yeah and i've never listened to a u2 song yeah. since u2 since then gone a since, long time since then that. have i ever not start listening to them i realized i'm like yeah I think they're pretty overrated, honestly. Yeah. Did you go to the like World Tour or something like that? I, I, I've been to like two or three. I've been to three other concerts. Yeah, I'd never, never went to yeah. a concert. Never had the need to. But yeah, but it was just I remember like the the, the stunning hypocrisy mm. of Bono, who flexes himself as this like humanitarian who wants to save lives, and here he is advocating for an amendment that's going to uh, allow the murder of babies to happen up until like basically partial birth abortion like right up until like before they give birth you can you can murder the baby yeah uh bono in the eyes of most people is a hypocrite so yeah i wouldn't be listening to anything bono says yeah you know, uh, you know people <laughs> I've that, heard that people that put music on your phone without your permission yeah i'm still angry about that so. <laughs> i know the very first so. song that i play on the apple phone is yeah. like oh what was it babe what was that song that uh u2 song on the iphone 
ba ba Barbara, Santa yeah. Barbara. It would just always play. It's like, yeah. come on, dude. Come on. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So I don't even get He apparently anymore. came out and like apologized to her like all these years later. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. okay. That was the worst, Bono. It's like 12 yeah. years later. Oh, yeah. When I do Bono a decade and two years ago. Hands. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he needs to rip. Yeah, he needs to apologize, not just yeah. for that terrible album, but he needs to repent for advocating for the murder of babies. But um, one thing that's interesting, though, is that when it, I, I don't know if it was apologia that did this it might have been but they were actually interviewing people just asking do you actually know the ramifications of uh the eighth amendment and a lot of them were told that uh you know it's just basic early birth they weren't aware of the ramifications up until like right before up until like nine months basically yeah. and they were like they were like shocked they're like oh my goodness like that's not right but the you know. problem there in Ireland especially is they used um, a particular woman that was, they said, was refused an abortion and yeah. she died. So they politicized, politicized that woman and that event. And then actually it was found out that wasn't the actual reason why she died. So that's what they do. And mm. they, they polarize, uh, popularize these things that aren't actually true. So people are mis misinformed and then they vote based on that. So. Yeah. Wow. It's just what most medias do. So mm -hmm. they they were really pushing for Ireland because Ireland was the last place, um, nearly in Europe that didn't have abortion. So wow. and, it, and with all the different ideologies that are here now in Ireland, it's being pushed aggressively. Yeah. And Christianity is like people are nearly afraid to speak out at this yeah. stage. Well, so, uh, you know, Pastor Jeff and the Unabortion Now group, they just went out to Ireland uh, to kind of help you guys out. Tell me about that. Yeah. Like, what was, what, how, what did you take away? What do you think the impact was with them coming out there with the other pastors that, that, and everything? That, that last time, I think, was a time of uh, refreshing and stuff like that because they've actually been over there since like 2017 with different churches, mostly in the north, but also yeah. with our church now. They've, they were in there 2020. Zach, um, Luke, and Jeff came over. Yeah. But the, trying to convince people, hearts and minds of Christians, that you know the pro-life movement is doing what they're saying they're doing. They don't want to end abortion. It's, yeah. it's very difficult to get past that for some people. They'll mm -hmm. be like, why, why would the pro-life do that? We're pumping yeah. so many millions into this uh, fight, but they're, they're not actually fighting. So uh, we've had great success in mm. changing hearts and minds, but everything is slow, you know, yeah. everything's slower in Ireland. So I've gone back to the reference there with yeah. Brad Pitt. He said the best quote out of that film is, yeah. this is not an American story. Mm -hmm. It's an Irish one. Yeah. So basically that means it's, there's no happy ending here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so what yeah, about, Irish, yeah. are, 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 they like to be tragic. Yeah. You know? They're not very op optimistic people. Yeah. You know? so yeah. They um, like the tragic stories and oh. the tragic films. <laughs> and, so trying to convince them to be positive that God yeah. is going to win. He's already sitting on the throne. Yeah. People are looking around saying, I like how you say uh, throne. That's so, like, uh, yeah. 23 in a tour. Then uh, people are making fun of me acting all week. You know, say, oh, say 23 no, in a tour, to, you know, like a leprechaun, uh, you know? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, what the Americans want, so yeah. we give it to them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, what, 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 what questions do you have? Do you have anything off the fly? Yeah, what's like the mysticism like over there in Ireland? There's lots of new age now at the moment. Uh, lots of people doing, um, you know, that Atahuasca is it? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's in Ireland. Experience, yeah. And people are searching for some sort of spirituality. Yeah. And then we have all the Celtic stuff as well. So people are getting back into that Celtic yeah. new age druid kind of things. Yeah. But that, the, the, quite, the thing is, they are looking for something. Mm -hmm. But like, where's the preachers? Yeah. Where's the people on the streets? Right. You know, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a big problem, you know? Yeah, yeah. just as we are up here, it's interesting culturally, just because um, like, I think there's a, just a huge interest in kind of that old Nordic paganism. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was interesting too, just because uh, there's a movie that came out. I saw it twice in theaters, actually. Um, it was called The Northman. And it's it's brutal. Mm. It's kind of like the Saving Private Ryan of Vikings movies, and it showed everything, both the spirit, like the them taking psychoactive substances, getting in contact with you know Thor and these other different uh, deities or whatever. I want I wasn't Thor, but just like whatever yeah. the, the whatever the, the Nordic was, yeah. whatever the Nordic one is. Yeah. Uh, but it was like brutal, and I like I walk. I kid you not, like I walked out of the theater, and I was like. 
thank God for the gospel because like prior to the gospel conquering these lands, like th- it was brutal. Like everyone was killing each other. Like even the guy who's centralized around in the very opening segment of the film, they put a bunch of women and children inside a home and set it on fire. Yeah. Like it's brutal. And like, that's what it was before these people came over and were evangelized. Yeah. It's like people that are Buddhist and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And then they learned the story that Buddha left his wife and his child right, to pursue his own right. happiness. And yep. how could that be a role model for anything, you know? Oh, 100%. It's, it's, it's terrible. Like, well, people yeah. only know a loose bit of the facts and they, they have statues everywhere. Like, yeah. You know, Buddha statue, a, a Viking head and all oh, yeah. this sort of crazy stuff. And well, yeah. They don't know anything on a deeper level. Mm-hmm. So that's why he shows like yours and like even the yoga one as well. Yeah. So many Christians doing yoga. For they sure. They don't know the dangers of it. They're actually promoting these things as a healthy options Mm -hmm. but like after listening to your show i didn't know enough at the time to be bold enough to say something to people but now that's why i like yours and Mm -hmm. things like walter martin and stuff and i got introduced to apology to people like that so it's uh, it's really helpful when you're talking to people on a one-to-one level Mm -hmm. and and you can actually tell them and then that they get introduced to the gospel in so many different ways Mm -hmm. you know so Praise God. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's a good journey. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming on to chat with us and hope you enjoy the rest of the conference, dude. No problem. Take care. Awesome, man. Appreciate you. All right. Well, uh, this is our first ever, uh, uh, what do you call it, Be- getting behind the mic with us. The uh, fans. The fans. fans. Cast. We, we can't. We fan actually, cast. We actually said it the wrong way, like not realizing that we were actually titling it under a very terrible website. Remember oh that? my goodness! Do you realize you we did right. that? Yeah, this yeah. is the fan cast. The fan cast. The fan cast. The first cultures fans cast. <laughs> so all that being said, <laughs> on, uh, we're yeah, next time uh, if you ever want to come out. Well, if we do want one next year, uh, Reform Con. Uh, we are so glad we got to interact with everyone here, all of our fans, and we hope to see and uh, meet a lot more of you guys in person in the near future. So that being said, we'll talk to you guys next time on Cultus, and I hope you enjoyed this fan cast.